Hi and welcome to another episode of UTD Scuba Diving TV. A special episode this time, because a friend of UTD, Gareth Locke, author of the book Under Pressure, uh, has organized an online conference. I'll leave a link in the description below. And he's asked for this conference a whole bunch of people from the industry to come with content and hold some online speaks. Now, he's also asked some of the organizations to come with some content that can be displayed during this online conference. So therefore, I'm shooting these three small videos. I'm trying to keep them small and to the point so that you can also use the time to look at all the other fantastic content I'm sure will be out there during this online conference. So first of all, I'd like to thank Garrett for giving us the opportunity to, to join in a way, in this way, share our opinions on some of the things that Garrett also holds close to heart, uh, human factors in diving and thinking diving. So, um, so here goes. We got three topics. Uh, this first video is about communication. The second video will be all about precision versus practicality. And then on the third video, I'd like to quickly talk about how you should use your instruments. And um, we've done a video on this before, but I think it bears repeating a couple of times, this one. So this first video is communication. Communication on the water is, I would say, one of the most important skills you can master. And it's, it's something you can't master alone because communication needs to take place between two people at least. So the awareness needs to be there from the start for communication to actually find place. Now there's a great quote by George Bernard Shaw, an Irish writer, play writer that was born in 1856, who actually won the Nobel Prize for literature in 1925. And He's made many quotes, but this quote is about communication. And he says, the fatal flaw in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. And I think that is very, very fine. And actually, Gareth, he mentions this in one of the chapters in his book. And, um, and I think it's a fantastic quote because you'll see this a lot in diving. Uh, when people communicate something and then after they've given a hand signal or a light signal, you know, just assume that that signal hit the spot and they veer their eyes away, assuming people will follow or do whatever they were asked to do. And uh, we address this in, uni in UTD in a simple way by saying that the communication always has to be a feedback loop. And what we mean by that is whenever you give a signal, you expect the same signal to be given to you in return. That way you're, you're, you can be sure that that signal has gotten understood. So for example, if I say, let's go in this direction, I expect the team member who I'm showing this signal to, to also say, yes, I agree, let's go in this direction. We don't want what we sometimes call the okay party, right? I mean, let's go in this direction. Okay, no, no, I didn't ask if you were okay. I asked if you wanted to go in this direction. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, it can be really confusing because if I wanted to know if you were okay, I would give you the okay signal and so on and so forth. Now, when we, when we look about, talk about the okay signal in diving, it's always very funny to me that you see people diving beside each other and for no apparent reason, they all of a sudden turn to the person, signal with the light to get attention and ask, are, are, are you okay? And they'll get, I'm okay. And we'll continue. And I'm like, I'm sometimes questioning these people. It's like when you're walking on the street beside each other and you're, I don't know, whatever, you're just walking and looking around. Do you stop and ask if these people are okay? Just every sun, every 50 meters. No, I mean, it would be rare. It would be really weird, right? I mean, you're walking down the street, it's like, hey, by the way, you're okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Good. Let's go. I'm walking on. You know, there, there, there's no point in asking if someone's okay when there's no hint that they're not okay. Now, you're walking along the road and you hit your foot and, oh, damn, I hit my foot on a stone. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. This just hurts. Let's go on. 
Yeah, we can go on. Okay, great. Then it makes sense, right? So when you see the OK signal being thrown left, right and center in diving, it's sometimes you people use the OK signal as a shield to say, leave me be. I don't want your attention. I'm doing something at the moment. And it's quite, quite ironic because at that moment they are not OK because they're in the middle of something. Um, and you see it a lot but when people are preoccupied with something and then during their, I don't know, whatever they're doing, the other diver gets impatient and just asks, are you okay? When they're clearly in the middle of something. And uh, usually it happens on the surface as well, where you see a diver in a group wanted to go down and one diver in the group is still spinning in the mask and getting it ready. And they would clearly ask, Okay, is everyone ready? Instead of just looking around and see that you can answer that question for yourself, because no, not everyone's ready. They're still preparing their mask, so it won't fuck up during the dive. So with com when it comes to communication, when you want to ask something, first make sure that you're not already aware of the answer before you ask it. Yeah, so if someone is clearly doing stuff underwater, don't go in the middle and ask if they're okay. Let them finish whatever they're doing. As soon as they establish eye contact, then you can ask, is everything the way it should be? Are you okay? And they will communicate it onwards. You can for sure go in and see and observe what they're doing or trying to do underwater and then come in with another hand signal. Now, the hand signal we use for stop, I can see what is wrong let me help you out, is very simple. It's just a fist being made right in front of the diver, like this. And it means hold. It comes from cave diving, where you say hold the line. Now, as soon as your dive team or buddy comes to you and say hold, you just sit there, stop what you're doing, stop moving, and just breathe and let that diver help you. And some cases, you know, something with Equipment can be so jammed up that it's almost impossible to explain by hand signals, but it's very easy for you as the observing diver to, to fix that. And you go, stop, the diver goes, still, you fix it. You say, okay, everything's okay, let's continue. After the dive, you could probably have a discussion about what, well, what, what did you do? Well, your backup light was on or you know, something, there was something twisted, there was a piece of kelp stuck in your webbing, whatever, it can be a million things. So when we look at communication underwater, I, I, I was recently in Ireland um, teaching an essentials class and there was one diver which uh, wanted to communicate something to the rest of the team. And let me show you this little clip because it's quite funny. We had a laugh when it happened. Now it's just too slow to touch the camera, so uh, you can see he started communicating something. And here's the slow mo. He just signaled 105 and pointed at his computer. The guy, he doesn't understand, he points at his compass because he thought he was communicating a direction. And here he's testing this, touching this. Place the computer, the cylinder or the transmitter, 105. Still doesn't understand. Okay, let's try the other teammate. Hello, see my pressure, me, 105. And you can't see, but she's with the other hand signaling to go to the right, and he's still trying. This is where I stop him and say, hey, dude, forget that transmitter and just use your SPG. Okay, I, I, th I think you agree. It was quite funny, right? And it's kind of tying into the other video we're gonna make about precision versus practicality. And also a little bit about your instruments should already tell you something you already know. Uh, in this case, the diver was diving with a transmitter and uh, at a normal SPG. And the other two on the team 
because as you know in UTD we don't really condone the use of of transmitters as I'm, because we just think they're unnecessary as we'll talk on in the other video but I, I figured I'll leave this guy with the transmitter on his system and we'll observe what the weekend brings and I'm sure there will be a point during the course where I can make a convincing point that he, he himself will realize that this piece of fantastic machinery is actually superfluous in our type of diving and our philosophy. And sure enough, this happened. So that kind of got the point across that he, he knew, okay, yeah, it's showing me something that's unnecessary. So anyway, that was a quite funny situation. So how to leave you off with a, with a good couple of tips, how can you make sure that you and your team have a clear way of communicating? Well, it starts with your own situational awareness. Your, relaxed, your, your relaxation and your calmness during the dive enables you to take in more input. So the better basic skills you have, finning techniques, balance, buoyancy control, trim, the more you are able to understand that things are being said to you and in what way they're being said to you. So if you work on the basics, work on your trim, your buoyancy, your finning techniques, you will open up your mental hard drive, so to speak, for more communication. It'll be more likely that you understand what's being said to you and you also are in a position to stay stable underwater, observe the communication and reply accordingly. So um, this was the first little video of our three video series for Gareth Locke's online conference. Um, have fun. I'm sure there's tons of great uh, content coming out there. Uh, I know that Beatrice Grivora from Italy is holding a lecture on the topic of communication one of the days. So uh, Beatrice, if you're watching this, hi, greetings from Denmark and uh, have fun on your presentation. That's it for now guys, as always, see you out there and stay sharp.